Hello everyone, Josh here with Exodus Games, bringing you another Awakened Cast Air video, and today we got the latest patch notes for December 16th, 2021. Now, we're currently in an ongoing maintenance right now, so I don't know when we're going to be able to get back into the game yet. I have another video planned uh, for the summoning event, I do imagine, so we'll try and get that out later today, perhaps. But anyway, so we got new, um, new updates here. I'm going to go through everything, we're going to analyze and talk about them, give you my thoughts and my opinions, now, obviously... I'm going to be keeping it 100 here. If it's something that I feel is an improvement into the game, I'm, of course, going to praise it because we are fair here. Um, if they do something, you know, very poorly, especially if it's like against free to plays who are already struggling enough, then we're going to call it out. So we're going to do it, you know, very fairly down the list here. So we got hero balance of adjustments. Zetlin, the curse effect cannot be dispelled now, nor can it be extended. So there was a bug going on where people were abusing that bug in Guild Wars, or I'm sorry, Guild Wars. We don't have Guild Wars yet. Uh, Guild Battle. There we go. And they were doing crazy amounts of damage and people knew about it and they were abusing it. And the people who, ab who abused it, shame on you. You know better. Why are you doing that? You know what you're doing. Um, if I was one of the developers, um, I would have sent out to my community reps to put out an announcement if you kept abusing this bug until we got it fixed. You could be out for suspension or possibly being banned from the game. And obviously that didn't happen, so people continue to abuse it. So hopefully we don't run into a situation like that again, because that is giving people an unfair advantage if they have a certain unit that they know is uh, bugged and they're able to abuse that bug. They're going to do it unless you give them a reason not to. And unfortunately, we didn't have that reason. So maybe going forward... Um, the developers or any of the community reps or mods are watching this video which they might they might still be doing that make sure that you do something like that in the future because we don't want people to abuse bugs like that because that just creates a toxic environment we just don't want that okay uh gajar modified the viperous potion from applying poison to all enemies to applying poison to the remaining enemies gajar modified uh venom influx from reducing the target's attack to reducing the target's resistance so i guess they wanted to balance him out a little bit or adjust him slightly black corn totem will now purify negative effect of all team members at the end of each turn that basically just completely makes joseph completely useless in the full water team for ash magisteria for farming there's no point running joseph there now because a lot of people that got the battle pass are going to be utilizing Blackhorn. Now, if you're free to play, you're probably going to still want to stick with Joseph. You're going to still want to stick with your Mary to do that negative effect removal, which is still perfectly fine. But if you are running Blackhorn and you already invested into him, you don't really need to invest into Joseph now, at least for Ash. You can still, of course, uh, invest into Joseph for PvP, which we've already showcased how good Joseph can be in PvP and how he can be a really good counter to Windstrex, etc. Uh, Blackhorn's nature revival removes the purification effect and reduces the cooling time by one turn. So they basically gave Blackhorn quite a bit of a buff here. Totem will purify negative effect of a random ally each turn. So again, he's just going to be doing a lot of purification, removing a lot of negative effects, which is fine for a lot of PvE content, especially in Ash with the bomb. So again, that's going to make Joseph not as needed there if you do have Blackhorn. You know, again, that's if you have him. Um... I, I like the changes. That makes Blackhorn a little bit more viable. The The issue is, though, it's Connor is still probably the best healer in the game. Outside of the uh, abusing uh, reincarnation or revival from the dead, if you will, with Mythasia and PvP. Outside of that, Connor is still by far the best healer in the game. So, we'll see what they do with that going forward. Uh, Valeria also received a huge buff. Valeria became a monster. She was already good with the new changes they gave her in this beta, and I did give them praise for that earlier on in a soft launch valeria the lifesteal ratio of scarlet feast has been increased from 20 to 35 percent so she's getting more lifesteal and also her sacrifice ratio of eye of the curse one her ultimate went from reducing her hp by 30 percent to only 20 percent so she got a significant buff she's gonna be so much more viable now in tulpa she's gonna be great in pvp she can be great in pve story farming everything she's just gonna be a solid fire aoe unit like, she got a significant buff from her beta days, okay? She's a monster now. She's literally an AoE monster. Um, Very nice there. So if you have her build up, congratulations. You got yourself a beast, especially for Tulpa. Mary, I don't know why they gave her a nerf. 
this is one of those things I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm scratching my head a little bit. Why? What was the point of this? Change the ability uh, protector from grants all team members one stack of invincible for two turns to one turn. Usually, I'd say most cases, you're burning Mary's invincibility the turn she cast it anyway. Or I should say rather the round she cast it. It gets wasted anyways. It's because you're usually going to be popping it before you get hit by multiple enemies. So usually that gets burnt anyway. So I don't really see the point of that change. Um, it is what it is. Light Kane obviously has a better invincibility because his is for the entire round. You can get hit as many times as you want in that round. It doesn't matter. Um, optimize the battle. AI of Blackhorn, Yolanda, and Windstrex. So not exactly sure what all they changed there. Uh, maybe with better priority casting for skills that you need to be used first. Other, you know, more so than others. Dungeon adjustments. Now, I know a lot of free to plays are looking at this one with, you know, their mouth watering like, oh my God, can I, can I finally farm gear, man? Can I finally farm gear? Well, let's see. Fully reduce the attack power of dungeons boss, uh, Roaring Topo. Again, that's going to help. Um, that's going to make, obviously, more units with lesser base stats more viable again, like Zachary, like Evelyn, like Elson, um, even Connor himself. Those are all elites, so they have lesser base stats, obviously, than, like, you know, epics and legendaries. So that's going to be very helpful, and it's also going to make Zatlix even more um, fundamentally sound, more useful, again, like he was in beta for that stage, because now he's going to have neutral um, typing. And he's not going to get hit quite as hard either now. So that's going to be good for him as well. Adjusted the dungeon boss, Ash Magisteria. Fixed the target selection for basic attacks. Now the target of the restraint element will be attacked first. Followed by the target with the most health. Fixed the bug with the summoning of the fire imps. Now fire imps are summoned once every three rounds. This is going to be very, very helpful for people who are running the true, the true water queen, Nathalia. She's going to completely dominate now. She was already a dominating force anyway to be reckoned with. Um, but now she's going to be even more um, amazing. And not to mention, this is also going to help Andre users. You guys know I love Andre. He's an amazing single target nuker. He's going to be actually viable now in Ash Magister because now you're not going to have to worry about the imps as much. So you don't need to worry about AoE as much as you did before. Okay, so now you can run an Andre with a Nathalia or an Andre with a Hydrissia, or you can just go full in AoE and just run Nathalia and, and uh, Hydrissia together if you want. You know, whatever your poison is, <laughs> you know, you know, pick your poison here, right? They're all deadly options. All right, so adjusted the dungeon boss, Queen of Tides. Now, this is one a lot of people have issues with because this is the boss that people need to farm a lot. But right now, outside of the poison team with Gangella, which is very expensive, very whale heavy. You weren't able to really farm this stage beyond like maybe eight for a lot of people. Even if you had built up level 60 green units like uh, Edacris to keep removing the buffs. Um, or even another unit like um, Antinua who did massive single target damage. They just weren't cutting it. And trust me, I know because I built both those units, maxed them out, their glyphs and everything. Put amazing gear on them, had them both over 5k plus attack with 200, 220 plus crit damage each. Um, and they still were going in there and getting dominated. Uh, I believe that was on nine. So it's like, it wasn't, it didn't make any sense to me. So hopefully now with these changes, we're not going to go over all the changes because there was a lot of them. Hopefully with these changes, it makes that a lot more feasible. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different changes there. You guys can read them for yourselves. Obviously it's going to, it's going to, uh, it's on their official Facebook group, or you can of course go into their discord if you're not banned from there. <laughs> wink, wink. Uh, all right. So increased... The drop rate of high quality equipment on the 9th to 11th floors of Arcane Dominator. That is great for free to plays. I definitely want to hear that. Uh, modified the tavern with a Christmas theme in a Christmas event that will be coming next week. So that's great. I was starting to get a little bit worried that we weren't going to be getting a Christmas event, which would be a huge missed opportunity, especially if they're trying to cater to the Western market. You got to have those things. Um, I would like it to have already started though, because releasing it during the actual week of Christmas is a little bit of a bold move because you know two three of those days of that week people might not even be playing because it is christmas christmas eve christmas day the day after you can be doing a lot of traveling going to be doing a lot of visiting with family spending time with family personal things like that so you know there might not be a lot of people actually going to be logging in playing um per se so 
It's a little bit of a bold move to release the event during that week instead of the week before, you know, the current week we're in. I feel like that would have been a better play, but I digress. They at least are adding one, so got to give them kudos for that at least. Optimize the rules for resetting the points in arena, reducing the score drop for weekly resets and season resets. The damage that caused the target's max health percentage in the Endless Trial Artifact effect was modified to current health so they basically nerfed that artifact but here's the thing that artifact wasn't even the big wasn't even the big daddy the big ones were the ones where if you got a kill you got to automatically attack again sorry about that guys almost knocked my stand over um or the other one that actually allowed you to do a lot of true damage like those ones were the true artifacts that i thought they might have hit first it's kind of weird that they hit that one instead but whatever Adjusted the ability icons of Mary and Evelyn first dawn. Uh, fix the bug. It says nug, but it's bug that allowed the gear in arena store to be purchased freely. I didn't even know that was a bug um, because I didn't ever see any gear that was worth even buying. So whoever was actually finding gear worth buying and had enough currency in arena to keep buying it, they were probably a whale anyways. So it really didn't matter, but I, I guess that was a bug. So now we know. Now you can no longer receive the cor uh, corresponding guild quest rewards repeatedly after joining a new guild. I didn't know that was a thing either. That's kind of abusive. Wow. It's not like the rewards are amazing, but still, wow. You could sit there and just join a new guild every day or something and just keep collecting rewards. Like, that's a little bit crazy. The hero rating function that appears after clearing Arcane Dominator will no longer pop up repeatedly. It's basically that star rating. Say, hey, how would you rate this? Blah, blah, blah. That's okay. Whatever. Reduce the trigger probability of the party of three in arcane dungeon. That's a little uh, Unfortunate for free to plays because as of right now that is our best way as a free to play to actually get six star gear um, Because we're not gonna be you know, just consistently farming stage 11 plus of gear dungeons So getting six star gear we relied a lot on the party of threes Especially with the changes that they made last week But that's a little bit unfortunate that they kind of nerf the probability of getting them when you're actually farming in a gear dungeon so I mean it is what it is but that is a little bit unfortunate for free to play that's a little bit of a hit not a massive hit but a pretty big hit i don't know how much the probability has been re reduced if it's by a little bit okay but if it's by a lot that's sad because again that was a free to play uh option to get six star gear even if your six star uh gears were not always good sub stats or main stats there were at least six star gear that you could at least access now so you know that may not be as feasible of an option anymore but we'll see what happens going forward uh, overall, I do like some of these changes. Nothing really groundbreaking. If you are a Valeria or a Blackhorn user or even a Gajar user, these are going to be like the biggest changes for you. Honestly, uh, outside of that, a lot of this other stuff is pretty standard. Um, I do like that they did, you know, change up some of the bosses. So maybe Tulpa and Tide and Ash is going to be a little bit easier for a lot of you to farm. And good thing is a lot of the gear you're going to be utilizing in most aspects of the game are in those dungeons. So that's good um so yeah overall like if i was to rate these patch notes out of a 10 i'd give it an 8 it's not bad it's nothing groundbreaking like i said there's nothing in here that's gonna make me go off the rails upset or angry they did include a christmas event coming next week so that's good not sure what that event's gonna be it could be you know a decent event or it could be an amazing event i don't know but uh overall not bad i will give them praise for this week so you know hey they survive another week <laughs> um but yeah let me know what you guys think about these changes in the comment section below um and go ahead and like the video if you did um we're gonna try and do these every time there's a patch note i'm gonna try and get them out as fast as possible because i know not everybody uses facebook or everybody uses the discord so some of you may not see these until the actual maintenance is over so it's kind of good to get these this information early if you're curious so definitely go ahead and, and drop a like if you did um, don't forget to subscribe, take notifications, and join me in the Discord in the description below. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Plays. And I'll catch you guys all in the next one. As always, until then, peace.